Welcome to Benefition, folks. My name is Josh. Today we're gonna go over five things that guides and other YouTubers aren't telling you about fishing tubes for lake trout. My specialty is lake trout. I absolutely love them to death. Right now we're on Lake Winnipesaukee fishing for lake trout in that 18 to 25 inch range. That's kind of our average, our, our medium sized fish in this lake. Number one thing that they're not telling you, if you watch Clayton Schick and the other guys, they're fishing for like 40 inch lake trout. They're using six inch gigantic or the, the big mama tubes from Send It Outdoors. They have big bait in that lake and they're also fishing for like 40 inch lake trout. You'll see them actually switch over to our big jig or a big tube just so he can ignore those smaller fish. We don't really have that luxury. Now, one thing I can say is if a lake trout is really hungry, they can eat almost something half their size. So a 20 inch lake trout can eat a bait that's 10 inches. They gotta be really, really hungry or really, really dumb. Um, that's very possible. So number one thing is make sure that you're matching the size of the bait in your lake to the tube size that you're using. So if you're in a bunch of rocks and stuff like that, you can use a bigger tube like this. This is a 3.75 inch from uh, benditfish.com. This is gonna resemble a small burbot. This is gonna resemble a crawfish. This is gonna resemble a bunch of different things. It's just one of those easy patterns. It's kind of a, a coverall. It's super convenient to fish. It kind of looks like everything. And lake trout love it. So make sure you're matching your profile size. I also have with me today a 1.5 inch and a two inch or maybe a two and a half inch. Number two is one thing that they are not telling you and a lot of bait shops would be like, oh, you'll just go grab those tubes off the shelf. There's a big difference or there should be a big difference if you're buying from a reputable company. One of the big things that they should be doing when you're buying tubes from them, they should be being made out of a more ruggedized plastic. So this is the saltwater mix uh, from bait plastics. It is a more rugged plastic. Yes, you can go buy a tube jig at a bass fishing store. That plastic will be really, really soft, easy to rip tentacles off, easy to pull the jig head over and easy to rip that whole thing. You don't want to be re-rigging all the time. I've had even a smaller plastic, just a normal bait tube that's meant for bass. I'll have two lake trout just completely destroy the thing where you have to cut off and retie. So make sure that you're buying lake trout tubes. That's really crucial. It'll save you a bunch of time. They might be a little bit more expensive because they're harder to pour and they're a little harder to deal with, but that plastic, it should be way more rugged. Number three, you'll see a lot of guys use two different types of tubes. And this is kind of obvious. Chartreuse, so a green chartreuse or a white glow. So this actually glows in the dark. I can't show you that right now, but I can show you a picture of it right, right here. This is pearl white with glow built into it, basically. Leave this out in the sun or hit it with a glow light or a UV light, even a flashlight on the phone. It's not the best, but it still works. There's not a ton of light down past like 60, 70 feet, even during ice fishing season or even open water. You want this stuff to glow. Lake Trout Key right in on that. So glow is key or super bright color. So you chartreuse will glow under UV light. And I really think that makes a big difference for fishing for lake trout. All right, number four. This is a kind of a secret one that people don't talk about, is make sure that you're matching the jig size to the bait and how the fish are reacting. Now, one glorious thing about tubes is they kind of like spiral and they kind of like dance on their way down. If you're running too heavy of a tube jig, it won't do that. It'll kind of just dive straight down. If you have super active fish, that's fine. If they're being really finicky and they want to hit it just on the fall, you need to have a couple different size weights of tube jig heads. So right now we have, this is three quarters of an ounce and this is called a balance tube. So see how there's this much weight on this side and that much weight on that side. So when I hang this from a line, it's going to be balanced no matter what. So it's pounding bottom, it's balanced. When I rip it up, it's balanced. When I pull really hard, it'll come loose basically on that line and go straight up. It'll help with line twist quite a bit. If you're also having trouble catching lake trout, like I said, if they're being really finicky, you can downsize. So right now I'm running a quarter ounce and I also, uh, or an eighth ounce, and I also have a quarter ounce here. These are non-balanced. They work just as well. That's number four is, is just making sure you you have the right, you have different size tube jigs to match the attitude of the fish. 
you want to fish with as heavy as you can get away with so you can get down there quick and get up quick and make them act appropriately but if they're being really finicky and they want to just kind of like hit something on the fall make sure you can downsize that hook weight so it just flutters on its way down or what you can do is do this is on your drop my line's frozen kind of right now you can throttle it on the way down with that instead of just letting it rip right to bottom that'll help you as well another thing that they're not telling you about tube jigs themselves is they have to be a super super stout hook you can't use the little panfish style hooks for like crappie jigs they're thin wire that hook will bend straight out i've had it happen on bigger lake trout i didn't feel like switching i couldn't find my good jigs i just put a cheapo tube jig on there and that lake air bent it right out at the very last moment i've actually had a hook snap completely off there's no worse feeling than that so i think that's number number five so number six is how do we actually fish that tube jig so there's a bunch of different ways you can fish it um, when you're on ice i'll go over the gear real quick i'm using a 1000 size reel you can come, go up to a 2000 you can even go down to 500 it doesn't really matter that much it depends on how big your lakers are running 15 pound power pro braid and newer braid is better, it doesn't hold as much water, has that coating on it still. Uh, so this is a circle tackle reel. This is their KY-1000. I have their 36 inch lake trout rod. And what this rod does is it has about, I think 70% backbone, maybe 60% backbone and the rest is tip. That tip allows us to be sensitive when we're pounding the jig in the mud. So if you can see, I'll reel up my jig right there. That little tiny dot, I'm using a tiny jig right now tiny tube jig. That little tiny dot right there is my jig. I'm going to lower it right down there. That tube is going like this. It's a small tube so it's not flying a bunch. One method is just kind of tapping it on bottom. You can reel up, let it sink down. If I was using a heavier jig, you can just kind of pound it on bottom. Another thing you can do is a chase. So I'm going to let it hit bottom, tap it a few times. This is super effective if you don't have a sonar. Right now I'm using live scope XR. You don't need to use that. You can just use a normal uh, Vexilar or a normal like Hummingbird or Garmin Striker or something like that. Tap it on bottom a few times. And then basically slow reel it to the surface. This is gonna attract any fish that are in that water column that are in that area. So right now there's a huge dead spot to my left and a huge dead spot to my right, even with live scope unless I turn it. So fish might come in out of nowhere and try to hammer that. I think there's a bait fish that's being chased by somebody or another laker, right? It's gonna trigger that bite. Uh, one of the most effective ways that I run a tube jig is I just suspend it off bottom and I wait till a laker comes in. A lot of our, our lakers in here are on smelt. They're gonna swim up to it and you wanna start reeling away from that. And if you wanna see a whole video on the weight and run technique, I'll leave it linked uh, right here. It's a uh, it's a really good in-depth video on, on my technique, not my technique, a technique for catching lake trout. So right now we're just gonna literally leave the rod on the ice or on a bucket. Right now it's just on the snow dog. Just chilling there waiting for fish to come in. And once I see one, I'm gonna reel away and hopefully he'll chase. If they're in the chasing mode. So well, I hope you guys enjoyed the five things that like YouTubers and guides aren't sharing with you about fishing tube jigs. They're super versatile. Uh, if you help, want to help support the channel and buy some tubes and some jigs, I just sell one size right now. I'm working on some more sizes. There might be more available as I'm posting this video. Uh, Benditfish.com is where I sell all my stuff. They work fantastic for Lakers, and it's made out of the heavy-duty hooks. They're non-lead, and it's made out of that heavy-duty plastic. They won't shred on your first couple lake trouts. That'll save you time and catch you more fish. If you guys want to see more, lake trout style videos there's a whole vlog style video a bunch of videos right here about lake trout and there's a bunch of how-to videos right here and i'll see you on one of those